Welcome back everyone to the eCore Academy eLearning platform today. My name is AJ Raj and I'm back with another anatomy and physiology video for you guys. And today's lesson is all about the lymphatic system yet again. So we're going to be finishing up our lymphatic system within the anatomy, anatomy and physiology course. And we're going to end it off by talking about the different disorders, uh, the major disorders and diseases within the actual system itself. But before we jump into that, please make sure to do four different things. Please make sure to smash that subscribe button down below, hit that like button on this video, turn on post notifications by clicking that little bell icon right next to the subscribe button, and also feel free to leave a comment down below. All of your comments don't go unnoticed. We would like future recommendations for any videos that you would like, uh, and also just some constructive feedback. We will reply. I, I promise you that, and we do pay attention. So thank you. Thanks for doing those four things. Uh, as I was saying, we're going to end it off. We're going to end off this lymphatic system by looking at these disorders, looking at the major types of diseases and disorders and how exactly they're going to be involved with the lymphatic system. So thank you all for this journey within the lymphatic system, one of my personal favorite systems, one that is also overlooked. So it does play to your advantage to actually get to know it very well and actually be able to uh, identify certain tasks, uh, certain issues within your anatomy and physiology course by relating it to the lymphatic system. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Let's take a look at the overview of the diseases that we're actually going to go over in this video, the diseases and the major disorders. So lymphatic diseases and disorders. So the following diseases and major disorders are involved directly with the disruption of lymphoid parts and processes. So the diseases and the disorders are going to be related to lymphoid parts, but they're also going to have different correlations with different parts of the body. However, because they do, have, uh, they do have direct relation with the lymphatic system, they are considered major lymphatic disorders. And I will tell you the different degrees of these disorders, how they can be prevented, and what are some of their own symptoms going over, uh, going over and showing you pictures of what they might look like. So starting off with our first disease, we're going to look at edema. That's going to be something that's, been, uh, that's known as common swelling and has to do with interstitial fluid. So that'll be our first disease, major disorder. Then for our second one, we have metastatic cancers. So these metastatic cancers are going to be involved with uh, tumorous uh, beings actually having free-flowing cancer cells throughout the body and how they affect uh, lymph lymphatic parts directly. And we have Hodgkin's disease. So this is a Hodgkin's disease, which is a specific type of Hodgkin's disease. Uh, it's Hodgkin lymphoma. So we're going to discuss what Hodgkin lymphoma is, how it relates to the lymph node, and how it affects the body overall. Then, of course, we have non-Hodgkin lymphoma, which is a different variant of Hodgkin's disease. And finally, we'll take a look at one of my personal favorites. Obviously, it's not a good thing, uh, you know, to have this sort of disorder and disease, but I've done a lot of experimentation uh, through uh, research on how exactly to prevent elephant elephantiasis, and I will get into that in future videos to come, probably a research-based video for you all. So we're also going to take a look at elephantiasis, which is a special case of swelling uh, and a counterpart of edema. So without further ado, of course, let's jump into all of these different diseases. Let's start off with our first one. We have edema. Edema is also known as common swelling. So common swelling is something that occurs whenever you maybe hit a certain part of your body super hard, or you have some sort of lymphatic obstruction within your body that causes for severe swelling or just minor swelling overall. So edema is caused by any disruption of lymphatic flow or circulation throughout the different channels of the body. This can happen organically, say for example, if you get sick and certain lymph nodes or lymphatic structures like your lymph vessels uh, start to clog up and they actually cause uh, an obstruction, so then you have a lot of swelling occurring in that area. Or it could be if you get injured in a certain uh, sport or physical activity, either there's contact in that area or maybe even break a bone and bruise that area. Interstitial fluid begins to clump up at the site of blockage within the lymphatic uh, channels, along those lymphatic channels and it begins to occupy the region and give mass to the area. So not just to the lymphatic structure, but to every single surrounding tissue, all the surrounding tissue, the muscle, it'll start to form this fluid. And what exactly is interstitial fluid? Interstitial fluid is fluid that binds white blood cells together, essentially helps connect them together so that they have a stronger unison immune response against pathogens. So this interstitial fluid is having some sort of uh, immune response, trying to protect that area. So it'll create a large lump of fluid. That's why when you touch a, a swell, a swelled up area, you're, you know there's some sort of injury in that area or some sort of obstruction. So it's trying to protect the area by putting lots of fluid in the area, causing a major bump or swelling and rivet in the skin uh, so that the underlying um, uh, underlying mass of uh, you know, sensitive tissue, bone, can actually heal without being uh, disturbed in that process. So some common examples, you can have it in the ankles. Say, for example, uh, you have a lymphatic obstruction through your vessels in your ankles or you hit your ankles in a certain area, that swelling will occur to increase the healing. 
and also it's commonly found in the wrist. So edema in terms of the lymphatic system occurs mostly within the ankles and the feet, feet and sorry, the ankles and the uh, wrists, but they are uh, due to a lymphatic obstruction, meaning they're most likely going to happen organically. Sometimes your vessels get clogged up or sometimes high blood pressure can cause these issues to occur. And of course, it is a more mild disorder. Then we have metastatic cancers. So these are free flowing cancer cells and obviously by the name it's cancer. So cancer is never good and it's considered a more of an extreme disorder. So metastatic cancer is when cancer cells break free from the original tumor that they're formed. Remember, uh, there has to be a tumor formed uh, initially, a uh, malignant tumor that actually pro provides and produces these cancer cells throughout the body. So this is when these cancer cells break free from the original tumor and they develop and occupy other parts of the body. So lymph nodes are actually extremely susceptible uh, to these uh, metastatic cancer, free-flowing cancer cells as they allow for many types of fluids to pass through and filter out. Remember, these lymph nodes are small little organs that actually allow for the filtration of fluid within the body, whether it be blood or just other lymph that passes through these lymph nodes. So what happens is when it's filtering out these fluids and these uh, free-flowing cancer cells are occupying that fluid, it'll then occupy the lymph node itself. And when these cells occupy the lymph node, they begin to destroy it while circulating through the fluid channel to other areas. So this will cause the node to actually inflame as all these cells are beginning to occupy it uh, and actually uh, deteriorate the cell, uh, the node itself. And essentially it'll cause either a burst or a rupture or just extremely inflamed and swollen. And you can actually feel that pain throughout the body. It'll just uh, come through uh, certain uh, symptoms such as fevers or even anorexia, like weight loss and general cancer uh, um, symptoms in that manner. And as you can see here, just as an example, uh, just to recap, uh, these cells can not only um, produce and be produced from the tumor cell, but they can al also multiply. That's what cells, uh, that's what cancer cells are also infamously known for. So once they break off to another site, they begin to reproduce in that manner. Uh, they begin to take over other blank cells or other cells within the body. Uh, and that's when they become really dangerous. It's about the spreading of it. So it's very important that metastatic cancers are found in the earlier stages rather than the later stages to, um, increase the survival percentage, the survival uh, likeliness. Now we're moving on to the Hodgkin's disease. So this has to do with malignant lymph nodes. So in a very similar manner as um, our previous uh, disease, such as, um, as our previous disease when it comes to metastatic cancers. So Hodgkin's disease occurs when lymph nodes cause for early signs of a malignant tumor and become the site of formation. This happens when uh, the actual lymph node becomes, uh, occupies uh, a certain amount of area and the tumor actually forms on the lymph node itself. So it's going to produce these uh, cells from the lymph node. And it tends to be concentrated around the neck, uh, specifically for Hodgkin's disease. Uh, and this is where um, your lymph nodes are going to become much more inflamed in those areas, and they can become very ir uh, visible and irritable in those areas. That's why doctors always feel around your necks, like I've said before, because those neck lymph nodes are probably the number one uh, sig signifiers for uh, certain diseases or just uh, certain illnesses within the body. And some symptoms include fever, anorexia, weight loss, and nightly sweats. As you can see here, there's an obvious obstruction on the neck. This is a much more severe case of Hodgkin's lymphoma, but when it's occurring in the earlier stages, you're going to have to utilize your self-diagnosis of the symptoms in order to identify what the disease might be and what kind of help you might need. All right, now moving on to non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Non-Hodgkin lymphoma is much more widespread. So it's just like Hodgkin's disease, except that it occurs, it occurs similar, similarly to Hodgkin's lymphoma, but it is found in many more clusters of nodes throughout the body. Hodgkin's lymphoma is, is much more concentrated toward the neck region, while uh, non-Hodgkin lymphoma is occurring through all different types of lymph node, lymph node uh, clusters throughout the body. It's more rare in this manner, but some of those include the uh, uh, certain areas as near the shoulder, near the clavicle, uh, also near the uh, waistline, near the genitalia. Those are some other areas and it's harder to treat. And as you can see here, this is a zoomed in picture of the actual uh, malignant tumor within the uh, lymph node. And as you can see, there are many, many uh, cancerous cells that can actually detach and cause metastatic cancers to form throughout the body, right on the lymph node itself. Now onto our final disease and disorder, uh, disorder, we have the elephantiasis tropical disease. So elephantiasis is a tropical disease with the inflammation of skin caused by lymphatic disruption or hindrance. So this happens when the lymphatic system is obviously, uh, uh, you know, uh, obstruction is occurring and disrupted, just like edema. However, this is much more severe and it's caused by a specific uh, uh, catalyst. So as you can see here, it occurs when you are bitten by a native mosquito in a tropical region that was infected by a roundworm. 
So when it's infected by a roundworm, that specific mosquito, and it actually bites you or, or it sucks out any of your blood, makes contact with your blood, uh, then you will most likely be uh, uh, diagnosed with elephantiasis within that uh, within that given area that it's being that you're being bitten. And this causes for an extremely abnormal amount of fluid buildup in one area that can lead to elephant-like swelling. That's why it's called elephantiasis. It's just an extreme amount of swelling caused uniquely by its uh, you know catalyst, the mosquito. And as you can see here, these are some very extreme cases, such as the upper thighs and, you know, the ankles and the lower calves, some extreme swelling. And this can be deadly overall because it can spread to the rest of your body. As you can see in the lady on the left, it spread to both of her legs, not just one leg. She had to have gotten bitten on only one leg, but it passed throughout the entire body. So this is a very extreme case, but it's much more rare. And this can occur in any part of the body and spread all over the body. So it is very uh, deadly in that manner. All right, everyone. So that'll be it for today. A very quick video for you all. Uh, this has been the Equal Academy Learning Platform. Please make sure to like and subscribe down below and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on any of our channel's latest uploads. And leave a comment down in the comment section down below. Check out our website at www.equoracademy.org. We have free note sheets, quizzes, and worksheets that go along with each and every single one of our videos. Email us at ecoreacademy.gmail.com and check out all of our socials. Links are in the description box below at Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. Uh, see what kind of interesting content we have there as well. Uh, and just see what kind of, um, uh, see if you can utilize our mediums to share all of our videos uh, to those who might need help in these certain topics. Once again, everyone, this has been AJ Raj. I had a blast making this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.